20. And then this, uh, this coming Sunday, the Lord's Day, uh, Miss Whitney fixed that thing back there and decorated it. So if you want to come with your uh, Easter outfit on and your family, if you want to take a picture under that, uh, that'd be great. It'd be great. So uh, that's what it's there for. And uh, if you want to do that, we'll do that. Amen. 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 All right. Revelation chapter number 20. Don't forget revival in, the, in a few days. And uh, we'll pray, pray for it. Pray the Lord to intervene. Pray the Lord to help us. And uh, we need revival around here. We sure do. And I need him all the heart, Brother David. As a church, we need him. And uh, so you just pray the Lord to help us. All right. Revelation chapter number 20. And uh, we have uncovered a lot of things in Revelation 20. We've uncovered that that was an angel uh, in, in verse number 1. The angel coming down from, from heaven, that was the Lord, uh, Jesus Christ. And he had the key, he had the key uh, of the, the bottomless pit. And, and he had a chain, the Bible said it was a great chain. And uh, that was quite a lot of chain in my mind, I would say. So it's a big change. We know that he also be changed to death and throw him in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. And you notice this, Brother Charles, it's a bottomless pit, so he's falling and falling and tumbling and falling. Never hit the bottom. You think about a thousand years of falling, and that's a long time. And while he's doing that, we'll enjoy the, uh, the millennial reign here on earth, where we'll get to uh, rule and reign with the day and enjoy a good time the, the earth going back to its former state before the sin. Uh, while Richard, I didn't know that, and then it'll be gone. Amen. So I told someone yesterday, uh, picking up some medication, and I told them, I said, I'm going to do something do something for you and the devil. And they said, what's that? I said, I'm going to leave you alone. And I pulled, pulled up. But uh, the devil will be gone, Richard, leave you. I hear you blend it away. And the earth will go back to its former state. And we'll have a wonderful time. Amen. Enjoy that time. And Adam and Eve enjoy it. Uh, we all think that God created man on the, on the sixth day, the seventh day God created. And Adam and Eve fell on the seventh. They may have lived a million years. We don't know. But I, they may have lived a million years in that perfect state. But brother, let's think about it. We'll go back to that stay in the earth and enjoy a good time together. Amen. So I also understand this, that we have discovered too that God is in complete control of this thing. Amen to that. God, hey listen, nothing takes God by surprise. Everything in this universe, everything in our life is running on God's schedule, God's time. And everything about this world is running on God's time. And uh, to think it's our time, we'd be very foolish to think that. But we're running on God's time. So he's in control, and his time is perfect, and he'll always protect his children. Amen. Amen. All things work together. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for them that love God, them that call according to their purpose. Everything works together for God, for the good of God's people. And God's going to take care of us. And on top of that, as the tribulation here uh, ends, and we're, we're going to have a real side scene to all that's taking place. We're not going to be in the corner somewhere. Brother Doug, God's not going to put us somewhere and say, I'll be back after a while. No, no, in John 14, he says, I'm going away, and when I go away, I'm coming back. And in the rapture, he's going to come back and get us. And from that point, Brother Daddy, will never be separated from the Lord. Amen. And so we'll have a first, and we'll also see what happens to the dead. Praise the Lord. That's, he's never given me a minute's rest. Brother Ben, he's never left me alone. He's always bothered me. Amen. He's always giving me a fit. Every time I think I've got the victory, sometimes he always slides around the corner and gets in an area of my life that he knows he can defeat me in. Amen. But we'll get to watch the, the devil get thrown in this bottomless pit for a thousand years. Amen. And we see that angel. I, I, I read to you uh, in, in uh, Revelation 19 about that angel standing in the sun. We'll get to be with him. 
If he made it, he'll bind the devil and cast him into the bottomless pit. Remember the midst of all the chaos, all the things that are going on, God's in control of this thing. He's on the throne. He's not still on the throne. He's on the throne. So let's pick up in verse 7. And I know we read that a little bit last, last week. But in verse 7, it said, When a thousand years were expired, Satan uh, shall be loosed out of his prison. He shall go and see the nations where the four, which are the four corners of the earth. God and man God gather themselves together to the battle. The number of them is the sand and the sea. And they went up the bread of the earth, the past camp of the saints of God, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are, and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great light from all. He that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there is found no place for thee. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in, those, in the books according to their words. And the city gave up the dead, and were in it. The dead and the hell were lifted up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their words. Dead and hell were cast in the lake of fire, which is the second day. And whosoever is not found and written in the book of uh, life is cast in the lake of fire. Let's pray. Our Father, we love you. Thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for the blessings of the hour. Now, Lord, I pray that you'd help my servant. Pray, God, that you'd give me the little grace. I pray, God, that you'd help me as I try to preach a little bit about the revelation. Lord, there's going to be a great day ahead for a child of God. Lord, I can't wait for that hour and that moment. The Lord gets to come back for his people, and we get to watch all that God's going to do. Bless these who are here and those who are sick. Encourage the saints of God these days. Send a revival to our church, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And so if you're titled, if you're titled, if you're titled, if you're serving the lessons or preaching, you, you, you can put a title for this week as the beloved city. The beloved city. And so we have already discussed a little bit about chapter number 20 and how God, what God's going to do to the dead. But in chapter number 20, verse number 6, the latter part, and we shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the dead, in verse number seven, he said, in seven, eight, nine, he said, when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And he said, and shall go and seek the nations which were there, the four corners of the earth, God and Magog, to gather them together to buy the number of the sands of the sea. And they went up on the bread of the earth, and past the camp, and the saints of God, and that blood city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So I say, first of all, let me just this way and say it. Chapter 20, verse 7 through 15. Now, I don't know if it's hard to explain everything, but it's going to be difficult today, brother, to even scratch even the surface of what's in these verses here. But these verses, we got, first of all, we're going to see God and man. But the everybody talks about Armageddon's coming. The Armageddon's coming. It's going to be the last great battle. No, no. It's not the last great battle. The last great battle on earth is going to be against God and man God. And uh, there's an issue here. Uh, what he's saying, he says in verse number seven, he said that the, 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 the Satan, the Antichrist, not Satan, the devil, is going to be loose out of his prison. Now you remember the chapter earlier part, chapter number uh, 20, uh, that he's going to be shut up for a thousand years, and for the latter part of verse number 3, Brother Benji, he said he's going to be loose for a little season. And we don't know what that little season is, but we do know this, he's going to be loose. And, and Brother Scott, when he's loose, he's going to 
learn some things. He's going to see the next. Amen. And so the devil is going to be the same old He went when he comes out of the boss pit as when he threw him in the boss pit. You hear people talk about uh, people going into prison and getting rehabilitated. And I guess it happens some. I'm not going to say it does. But I'm going to say that sometimes it's beyond rehabilitation. They're not rehabilitated. Why? Because of their nature. And the devil is not going to change just because he's out of thousand years of prison. He's still going to deceive the nation. He's still going to be the same old devil. In verse 13, he says that he's going to go to nations at the four corners of this earth. Well, preacher, the earth is right. Now, you've got some idiots out there that believe the earth is flat. Now, there he is. Somebody will have to help them to their car because they'll get run over. They're so dumb. And if we, and show me the number of here, please. But, uh, but they got to say, well, the earth is flat. There's a crazy talk. Even the Bible tells us that God said he's going to have the sphere or the roundness of the earth. God tells us that the earth is round. I don't have to go on a spaceship and I've been in an airplane high enough to see the, the uh, curvature of the earth. I've been there and saw that. But that didn't tell me it was. That didn't make me believe. I believe that way before then. As a matter of fact, when I was in school, they taught me better than the flat earth. Amen. I was taught better than that. But, but I knew all this. The earth got four corners. North, south, east, west. And, and the devil is going to go to the north, south, east, west. And he deceive the nation. And he's going to gather them up together, Brother Jared. And he's going to gather them. And he's going to put them to a battle against God's people. Against God's elect. Against, against the same of God. Hey, Richard, what he said? He's going to take a surround uh, that city, verse 14. Uh, so they're going to look around and get that verse 9. They're going to surround that city. And the Bible said in verse 8, said that their, their, their army is as the sands of the sea. Now, the river Euphrates where God's going to dry up the river Euphrates. And when he drives up the river Euphrates, that's going to be a, a, a highway for these armies to march on Jerusalem. You're going to have China, you're going to have all these communist nations, you're going to have Russia, and you're going to have all these people come together, form a reliant alliance against Jerusalem. Amen. America is still standing and will do the same thing. Amen. I don't like a crawfish. You? I don't like anybody that wants to, wants to back up. And we had a president that said he stood for Israel. Now he's backed up for, because some people in his party says that Israel ought to uh, be on trial for war crimes. Why? Because they're defending the nation. That's what they want to be in trial for. Amen. Nobody ever said this other day. Nobody didn't tell America how to go out and get the enemies that hit those twin towers. Bless God, they didn't have any business telling us what to do. And nobody has any business telling Israel what to do. Amen. They ought to do what they feel right. And whether we like it or don't like it, we've got no business telling them what to do. And I like it myself. Amen. And I like it. But why, why is everybody against Jerusalem? Now, I believe there is a tribulation here, and I believe there's going to be a, a great oil reserve found in Israel. That's what I personally believe. And uh, I know old Joe, uh, old sleepy Joe, old Joe wants everybody to drive an electric car, but that's not going to happen. Amen. So, so they're going to. They're going to Pour down Israel. Here's, here's what he's another reason, Brother Ben. That is where, what, wasn't that where God's son was birthed? And wasn't that where Jesus came to this world? 
born of a virgin. And when he was born of a virgin, uh, in Genesis chapter number 3, verse 14 and 15, God said this about, about that time. He said he's going to, the devil's going to bruise his heel. God's going to, Jesus is going to bruise the devil's head. The devil's going to bruise his heel. Just a very small hurt. But God's son is going to crush the devil's head. And it all happened because he come from Jerusalem. Amen. They think that if you can destroy Jerusalem, you can destroy God. You can't destroy God. Amen. I know that's God's people. Jerusalem's God's people. They're blind to the truth of Jesus. They're blind, many of them are, but they're still God's people. God made a covenant way back when Abraham. And God, when God says something, God makes a promise, he's going to keep it. Amen. He's going to be a protector. So they're going to pour out and try to surround them. And then all of a sudden in chapter number 20, verse number 9, that the Bible says that fire comes down from out of heaven, from God out of heaven. God destroys them. The battle of Gog and Magog, when the whole world turns on Jerusalem, just when you think Jerusalem's going to be annihilated, God in heaven is going to pour out rain. Amen. Amen. The seven-day war. They said there was a divine intervention in that. Amen. Nothing like what's going to be here. Amen. Satan's armies is going to surround Jerusalem. God's going to take care of them. Amen. Amen. Did you realize tonight that Satan didn't create himself? Satan didn't create himself. God created Satan. Amen. But Satan lives like he's God. He, he acts like nobody's greater than he. And during the tribulation period, he's going to do the same. Amen. Look, look in verse number uh, 10. So he said he didn't create him. Look in verse number 10. Uh, and I saw the, and, and the devil, rather, in verse number 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire with brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Amen. So I see, first of all, Gog and Magog. I see, second of all, tormented day and night. And so as the tribulation, Brother Benji, comes to an end, God will cast the devil into the lake of fire. He'll cast him in the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophet are already there. We saw that back in chapter number 19, I believe. Verse number 20. So he takes the beast and the false prophet, puts them in the lake of fire. And they're waiting, they're, they're waiting their God. They're waiting their leader. And so the devil is, Brother Jared, the devil is getting cast in the lake of fire where they'll be tormented day and night. The devil's tormented us, but he'll be tormented then. Now, I noticed something when I was reading and studying this this week. Look at verse number uh, three, uh, verse number two. He says, he laid hand on the dragon and he bound him a thousand years. Verse number one, he said he had a great chain. He laid hold on the devil and bound him. Throwed him in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. And so as a devil is thrown into the bottomless pit, he, is, he goes in, brother, a kicking and a screaming. But in chapter number 20, verse number 10, God said, I'm going to take him and I'm going to cast him in the lake of fire. He didn't bind him. Well, preacher, why didn't he bind? Why did he bind him in, in chapter twenty, verse three, but not in chapter twenty, verse ten? Because every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the Lord, and he'll he'll submit. Finally, the devil will submit to God. He was he was rebelled in heaven, and God kicked him out. And for all these thousands of years, the devil has rebelled against God. But when God takes him up and casts him in the lake of fire, he'll be bowed at the feet of Jesus. 
we'll be there and then he'll cast him, pick him up and throw him to never be returned again. I've used this illustration many times, but when an angler or a fisherman casts out his line, he casts with a promise of bringing it back with something on the end. I don't throw my rod, I don't throw my bait out, Brother Doug, for nothing to happen. I want something to happen out there. Brother David, I want something to jerk on that in that line. But that's not what it's here. That's not the reference that it is here. He'll take the devil and he'll cast him. In chapter number 20, verse number 10. He'll cast him into the lake of fire. Never. That word cast means he'll cast him. Never to be returned. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says they'll be tormented. Tormented. Day and night. We'll read over in the next couple of chapters. We'll see that heaven's a place that has no night there. There's no need of, of a light because the Son of God, Brother Doug, is the light thereof. And there'll be no night in heaven. The, the night will shine just as bright as the day. But in the lake of fire... There'll be day and night. And I've often wondered why that, that is. I've often wondered, Brother Danny, why is there going to be a day in heaven and no night? But why in, in, in this, this lake of fire that burns with brimstone, why is it that it's going to be no, a day and a night? Well, I thought about this. This is embryology. You can take it for what it's worth. But I personally believe that, Brother Larry, that the devil and the beast and, and the wicked that will be thrown in a little later, Brother Scott, they're always looking for the day that they get out. They're always hoping for the day that God lets them loose again. The devil in his mind said, well, I got out when I was thrown in the bottomless pit. Maybe I'll get out here waiting for the day. That God looks over, over into the lake of fire and, and lets them out. But the Bible said they'll be tormented day and night. They'll be tormented thinking that God's going to let them out, but knowing that God's not going to let them out. My Lord, what a time. And so in chapter number 20, chapter number 19, is the beast and the prophets or false prophets already there, and their sin partner comes and joins them? What a, what an awful time! What an awful time! Look in verse number eleven. He says, "And I saw a great white throne, him that sat on it, from the whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and has found no place for them." And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. The sea gave up the dead that were in it. Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. They were judged every man according to his works. Death and hell were cast in the lake of fire, which is the second death. Verse number 11, I see, thirdly, I see a great white throne. Verse number 11, it says, I saw a, a throne. You know, in the Bible, God speaks about three thrones. Number one, he talks about that throne in heaven that John saw in chapter number four of our book of Revelation. There's going to be a, a throne in heaven. Then he also talks about a throne here on earth in Matthew chapter number 25 during the millennial reign. They got, uh, Jesus will come and sit on the throne of David. The kingdom will be under his control. The world will be under his control. And Jesus will sit on that throne. So there's a throne in heaven where God sits right now. And there's a throne on earth where Jesus will come and sit. But then here's the great white throne. So there's three different thrones pictured in God's Word. 
And so I don't know exactly how it's going to work, Brother Roger, but I know we'll be there to watch it. I don't know if God's sitting on his throne right there where he's at. We'll move over to the great white throne. Sit on that throne to judge. He may be sitting on the throne right now for worship. You and I will be at the throne of God worshiping the Lord forever and ever. So I don't know if God's going to mingle those two thrones. I believe God's going to separate those two thrones. You have a throne of worship where we'll be able to worship God forever. Well, preacher, why do you say that? When he's done in this throne, he'll never use that again. But he'll use this in Brother Charles throughout eternity. The throne he's on in heaven right now. And so he sits on this great white throne. And there he's there to judge. There he's there to judge the wicked. The wicked dead. He's judging those that have rejected Christ. He said, I saw a great white throne. Him that sat on it, watch this now. The earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. You ever wonder why he said it like that? Brother Doug, maybe, just maybe, God God uses the language like that. He said, he sits on the throne, on this great white throne, and there was heaven and earth fled away. Wonder why? Found no place for them. There was no place for heaven to be, no place for hell, for earth to be. Wonder why? Because he's going to create a new earth. He's going to create a new heaven. So these earth, this heaven that God's talking about now, Brother Benji, is going to flee away. It's going to flee because of the, uh, the, the gloriness of that and the, and the torture and, and the pain that that one's gonna, gonna, that throne is going to put out. Amen. Heaven and earth will flee away. God is going to judge. This will be the greatest judgment of all. This will be the last judgment. God will never judge again. Amen. He'll judge. It's, it's, the greatest, it's the greatest of judgment. It's, it's the greatest occasion. It's the greatest scene of that judgment. It's got eternal consequences, this judgment does. It involves eternity. It involves being in hey, the lake of fire forever. Now let me say this tonight. The, 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 the lake of fire, hell, are different. People that are in hell, the rich man in Luke 16 is in hell tonight. Those that died uh, without Christ are in hell tonight. The Bible said he's going to parade hell out and come to the great white throne judgment. They're going to stand before that. And and in hell right now, Brother Benji, people are burning and, and, and begging for one drop of water. But when they get to the great white throne judgment, God's going to judge people. And watch what he says. There's three books now. There's two books. And the third book is the book of life. God's going to open up the book of life and going to read those names that are there. Think about this. Going to look at the book of life and going to call out our names in front of those that are are doomed and damned forever. He's going to call out our names in those book of life. And he's going to look at them when he gets to their name. And their name's not going to be there. And then he's going to judge them out of those other two books. Those other two books, Brother Dean, I mean, Brother David, they, they uh, contain the works that they did in this life. So if I have determined to go to, to hell forever, if I have determined... To reject Christ, I want to be the best person I'd be. I wouldn't drink. I wouldn't smoke. I wouldn't commit adultery. I'd go to church. I'd tithe. I'd read my Bible. I'd do all the things that she's going to do. Why? Because I'm going to be judged one day about the works that I do in this life. God's going to judge the dead, the wicked dead. 
And they're going to be judged out of those books. I would try to be the best I could. Why? Because you're going to have, you're going to have degrees of, of judgment. God's going to give you degrees of judgment in the lake of fire. So the judgment there. Hey, listen, the judgment is so serious that all the inhabitants of earth, all the inhabitants of heaven, turn away, flee, found no place for them. God will call up the depths from the deepest parts of hell. God will call them up, give their degrees of punishment. How sad. And this final judgment, Brother Larry, the, the end of judgment, the wicked. Now watch what he says in verse number 14. Death and hell were cast in the lake, and, uh, the lake of fire, which is the second death. Now God, Jesus, I mean, John told us that blessed are they for the first resurrection and don't have the second death put upon me. In verse number 6, blessed and holy is he uh, that have part in the first resurrection. That's when we got saved. On such the second death hath no power. This is the second death now. You and I have died twice. We either died on, we'll either die on this side of the grave when we call out to God for grace and mercy and he saves us or they'll, or they'll die at the second death. At the great white throne judgment. The wicked. God, that is the second death. Those that were not found in the book of life. Whosoever, he said they were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. Look, look lastly, verse number 15. He said, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. So I see second, uh, last of all, I see the book of life. Verse 14 says, death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. Verse 15 says, anybody else that wasn't blood washed, birthed in the family of God, redeemed by God's amazing grace, they too were cast in the lake of fire. This is a place that God's prepared for the wicked. Brother David, this is the place that God's prepared for those that reject God, reject Jesus Christ, reject the greatest gift ever given to man. Brother Danny, the greatest gift. The Lord Jesus Christ offers us grace during this time. Offers us grace during this time of life. This dispensation, God offers man grace. But not then. God's prepared a place, the lake of fire. So waiting for their, waiting people's arrival that's rejected God. That's turned away the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, and not one of them's going to slip by. And that, that's solemn thought, isn't it? On the other hand, that book of life refers to you and me that's written in the Lamb's book of life. You and I that have been saved. You and I, Brother Larry, that has been washed in the blood of Christ. Washed clean, Brother Benji. Thank God that we're in the Lamb's book of life. I know my name is there, written on those pages bright and fair. I know that. And so at any moment, any moment, we can get called up into that number that, that awaits us, the bride of Christ that awaits us. I wonder why God put all this in the, in the Bible. Number one, I believe he put it in the Bible to warn, to warn you and I about the dangers that are ahead, about the, about the awful future ahead of people that die without God. Brother, Brother Larry, I believe it's also to warn you and I that we could warn other people. We said this so many times. You heard it so many times. This, you're the only Bible some folks will ever read. And that's the truth. That's the truth. And we ought to warn men because of the facts of this truth of the Word of God. Amen. I'm glad I'm not going to hell, aren't y'all? Let's stand to our feet and be, be dismissed. Celebrate Resurrection Sunday with us at Morris Memorial Baptist Church.
join us for Sunday School at 10 a.m. Followed by a special Easter worship service at 11 a.m. Celebrate the joy of our risen Savior in a welcoming community of faith. We look forward to worshiping with you.